Lupins, to my mind, are one of the most spectacular of all the garden perennials. Beautiful flowers on strong stems that remain erect and encompass every color that the rainbow forgot. I have had lupins that have survived for as long as 15 years, but some lupins, after one profuse blooming year, die. Lupins possess a taproot which runs quite deep. They therefore cannot be transplanted. New stock must be produced either from seed or from cutting. When creating a new lupins planting, it is imperative that the bed be correctly prepared prior to planting. Lupins require soil that is slightly acidic, containing large amounts of organic matter. I usually cover a bed of 50 square feet with a 4 cubic foot bale of peat moss prior to planting. This also helps to hold down the weeds. Seedlings and cuttings do not usually bloom in the first year after planting, but they winter over so reliably that survival can be relied upon. Lupins are relatively pest free with two exceptions, slugs and aphids. I find that I can control both of these with sprayings of dishwashing detergent at a rate of two tablespoons to a three gallon sprayer. It is necessary to repeat the sprayings after each rainstorm. As the blossoms begin to mature and fade, I strip the flowers off the bottom of the blossom and take the flowering tips and bring them into the house and utilize them for cut flowers. For germinating lupin seed, propagating cuttings, and growing them onward, I use the same soil mix of two parts of peat moss, one part of vermiculite, and one part of perlite. Once the plants become rooted, or in the case of seeds, become germinated, I start feeding with five tablespoons of Peter's 202020 to five gallons of water. I fertilize with this solution approximately every third watering. For sticking cuttings and germinating seed, I use four inch pots. This enables me to do a single planting and not have to transplant up until the time that I set them out in the garden. It is important when filling pots to be consistent with your soil level as pots that are overfilled will not receive enough water and fertilizer and pots that are underfilled will receive too much. Pots should be meticulously stacked in the flat so that each pot is level and there is no gravel or organic matter underneath the pot as this will also cause uneven watering and fatalities. Once the pots have been filled and stacked in the flat, it is necessary to put it through a watering routine. This potting soil with peat moss and vermiculite and perlite is very hard to get wet and therefore it should be watered eight to ten times over a period of 24 hours prior to planting with either seed or cuttings. Lupin seed can be purchased from many sources and I have a preference for the Russell's strain as that produces the best color mix. Although I have collected my own seed now for many years and I find that I am able to retain a good color mix. As you can see, the investment in time and materials is significant in preparing flats. And for this reason, I want to guarantee that I have germination in each one of the pots in a flat, or most of them at least. In order to guarantee this, what I do is I plant two seeds to each pot. and when they come up, if two come up, I snip one off with my fingernail, usually the weakest one, in order to guarantee me having a plant in each pot. I use a sharpened pencil to create the hole in the soil in each pot, and I insert the pencil approximately one inch deep. 
and give it a twist on removal in order to firm the soil on the sides of the hole. After doing this, I can easily drop two seeds in each one of the pots in the hole. And if I should be unsure, I might even throw in a third just to make sure. After planting up the flat, I always make sure to label my planting as I do many different kinds of seeds. But also it is important to put the date on the planting label so that you can monitor your germination time. For many years, the only way that I knew how to propagate lupins was by seed. Someone from YouTube made me aware of the ability to propagate lupins from cuttings. I didn't know exactly what the procedure was in order to do this successfully, but I did 18 cuttings last year and all 18 survived, so I guess you can't argue with success. The procedure I used last year is the one that I have outlined here. I had a lupins bed which had some real nice varieties in it, but unfortunately the bed had become overrun with creeping ground ivy, a pernicious weed that is difficult if not impossible to get rid of through weeding. So I wanted to salvage the stock and repropagate it so that I could use herbicide to kill off everything in the bed and start fresh. I start by digging the stock and rather than digging the way I would to transplant, I use the shovel to cut through the root, preserving part of the root on the stock that I plan on propagating, but leaving the rest of the root in the ground. I then take the plant that I have dug up and remove almost all of the root, leaving only a one inch section at the base of my cuttings. I can then take and divide the cuttings so that each one has a single crown, leaving a piece of the parent root on each piece of cutting. I like to remove any garbage and dead foliage from my cuttings as this could possibly promote a fungus infection that would cause my cuttings to die. I then stick the cutting, completely covering the root section of the cutting and firm the soil around the cutting so that it remains upright. Often I prefer a handful of cuttings and then simply stick them while the pots remain in the flat. This is much more efficient if I'm doing large numbers of cuttings. Once the flat is filled, I water the flat several times in order to firm the soil around the cuttings. And then I have an area behind my house, it's on the north side of the house, where it never receives any direct sun. And I put it in that area for approximately 30 days after which the cuttings will have grown roots and I will move them to the bench and start fertilizing them. Cuttings and seedlings should be grown on for a period of approximately 90 to 120 days before being planted in a well-prepared bed with copious amounts of peat moss. For further cultural information on perennials, vegetables, and annuals, see my website, which follows.